right, Nova, you ready to roll? <coughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Amnesco Wolfdog Sanctuary's YouTube channel. For those who don't know, my name is Sarah. This handsome fella right beside me here is Nova. Now, did you know that Nova came to the sanctuary as a tiny little puppy? Uh, in fact, he was raised by his adopted wolf dog parents, Kuna and Zeus. In fact, if you stick around, we have a little segment from Georgina, the sanctuary founder, and she's gonna share a, little, a few stories about Nova as a puppy and what it was like to raise him from a tiny little pup. On top of that as well, we're also gonna dive into wolf dog misrepresentation, talk about puppies, and we're also going to talk about wolf dog breeders. So stay tuned and you will learn all about it. In a wolf pack, only two members reproduce and have puppies. These two are known as the dominant pair or the breeding pair. The other adults in the pack help to raise the breeding pair's puppies, and wolves are actually only able to reproduce around that December to January area of the year. Basically, this helps to make sure that puppies are born in the springtime. For the rest of the year, both the male and female are not able to reproduce. When the pups are born in the den, they are blind and deaf for the first 12 days. Their coat is dark gray, and they feed off their mother's milk. After 14 days, the pups begin to open their eyes. At this time, their eyes are gray-blue, but their eyesight is not fully developed. The pups begin to walk and stand and will eat pieces of regurgitated meat provided by the adults in the pack. Pups slowly gain their foot in after 25 days, and they start to appear out of the den now and then. After 8 to 16 weeks, the adults abandon the den and bring the pups to a rendezvous site. A rendezvous site is typically a clearing or meadow that provides the pups with an area where they can play, eat, and sleep, while the adults take turns babysitting and hunting. During this period, the pup size gradually changed from blue to yellow. When the pups are around 14 to 27 weeks old, they reach a growth spurt and their appearance becomes nearly indistinguishable from adults. Once the young wolf is 30 to 50 weeks old, they actively hunt and travel with the pack. Skeletal growth completes when the wolf is one to three years old, and the pup status in the pack may start to take shape, with pups either displaying more submissive or dominant behaviors. Wolf dogs are not pure wolves. They are animals that have some amount of dog content and some amount of wolf content. Typically, wolf dogs are not a natural occurrence in the wild, and this is because of a few reasons. First of all, wolves can be very territorial, and they don't typically see a canine in the distance as a friend, they typically see them as a threat, so they want to get them far away from the pack as possible. On top of that as well, wolves are typically monogamous and they do mate for life with one individual. Last but not least, as I mentioned, wolves have a very narrow breeding cycle and they're only able to reproduce between December to January. Dogs, on the other hand, have a much different reproductive cycle, which means, for example, a male wolf might be able to reproduce when a female dog cannot. Therefore, wolf dogs are typically not a natural occurrence in the wild. It is understood that the first generation of modern wolf dogs were the result of the fur farming industry. In the 1800s, wolves were owned by industries in North America for the purpose of pelting their fur out. As that industry began to die down, these wolves were bred with dogs, which spearheaded the exotic pet trade of wolf dogs. Today, wolf dog breeding is typically done wolf dog to wolf dog or wolf dog to dog. We don't typically see a pure wolf parent in the mix because it is illegal to own a wolf without a zoo permit. Therefore, breeders cannot have pure wolves. Now, some of the breeds that we typically see mixed with wolf dogs are German Shepherds, Huskies, and Malamutes. Because these dogs have a lot more of a wolfier appearance, they are typically bred with wolf dogs to retain that wolfy appearance. That being said, however, within reason, any dog can be bred with a wolf dog. In fact, we have Horton that lives on the property here, and he is actually mixed with Irish Wolfhound, so he's a very unique looking guy. Now, just like wolves, high content wolf dogs have a very similar reproductive cycle uh, where they can only breed from that December to February area. Because of that, high content wolf dog puppies are typically born in the springtime, which means a wolf dog's birthday can help us determine the wolf content within that animal. In fact, I would probably argue that Nova was one of the cutest puppies that came to the sanctuary. And we're gonna hear all of the stories from Georgina about Nova as a puppy. 
Hey guys, I'm Georgina, the founder of Yamneska Wolf Dog Sanctuary, and here with me I have Nova, who is an Arctic wolf dog that actually came to us as a puppy. So Mr. Nova here, he was about four weeks old when he arrived in my life here at the sanctuary, and he was introduced to the Yamneska pack with Kuna and Zeus when he was, yeah, just a baby. So when Nova was first introduced to Kuna and Zeus, there was a whole lot of submissive puppy wiggles on Nova's part. And uh, Kuna and Zeus were actually really excited to kind of embrace having just a youngster for them to mold and kind of grow within their family. And yeah, honestly, from the very first day that Nova arrived, Kuna and Zeus really just accepted him as their own. And it was a beautiful experience to watch Kuna and Zeus be able to play that mother and father role and raise the handsome man that Nova became. Watching Nova grow up was definitely um, an interesting experience. Because Nova is an Arctic wolf dog, he did actually behave a little bit differently than other wolf dog puppies that I had raised. And Nova, just in terms of his personality as well, has always just been a very intense guy. And so it was very interesting for me to navigate that intensity and behavior even as a young puppy. Um, thankfully, at that time, I did have a good amount of experience with high content wolf dogs already that just going through the teenage phase and the adolescence and all that kind of stuff was definitely something that was very interesting to kind of go through with Nova. But thankfully, with the help of Kuhn and Zeus to help support me, um, we raised a wonderful, wonderful man. I think for me, one of the just most prominent kind of special memories or moments that I have of Nova when he was a puppy um, was when he was probably, if I had to guess, about six or seven months old. And Nova always loved toys but he was also a crazy resource guarder. And this was at a time that I was still able to bring Nova into the house. And so his special spot was always on the couch because he always would resource guard his toys and whatnot. One of my strategies to kind of help with that was by overloading him with toys. But if he had so many toys, then maybe he wouldn't resource guard them as much. So I remember there was one day where he was just being lazy on the couch in the evening and I literally piled, I think, every single dog toy that I owned at that time onto Nova and, and surrounded him. He was just buried in dog toys and I think that might be the happiest that I've ever seen him as a puppy anyway. It definitely did not help break his resource guarding at all. There was still always that one special toy that he always wanted to keep away from everybody. But yeah, that was just a really just fun moment where, um, yeah, just getting to see a high content wolf dog puppy being buried in dog toys is kind of a sight to be seen. Nova as a puppy, he always gravitated towards Coon and Zeus more than he gravitated towards me as far as looking for guidance, leadership, all that kind of stuff, which kind of makes sense based on his behavior, the content of wolf that he has, that kind of thing. So my relationship with Nova has always been quite different than the relationship that I have with Coon or Zeus, for example, who do somewhat look towards me as a parent figure. Nova never saw that in me. And so that was something that was really interesting for me to navigate just through his different life stages as well. There was kind of phases in his life that he really didn't want very much from me. And there's other phases where he did offer kind of his love and affection towards me. It even kind of changes season to season based on his hormones. Now, when he was really kind of, you know, younger, going through the teenage phase, kind of typical thing, he thought he knew best and definitely didn't need me to help him with anything. He was always really stubborn, always wanted to do his own thing. Then as he kind of hit that middle age where he he became really sure of himself, who he was, where he fit into the family, and how I fit into kind of the pack dynamics as well. So that's where I think finally in a way I was kind of able to break through to him a little bit where he did want to offer up kind of who he was and build that relationship with, with me a bit more, but it was still always secondary to Kuna and Zeus, obviously. Now that Nova is in his senior years, I can definitely tell that he is way more relaxed and open and even just his ability to offer himself up to other people he's just 
yeah, a lot more willing to create relationships with people and kind of even just let me in. And so it has been interesting to see how my relationship has evolved with him as he's grown up. And it'll be interesting to see how it continues to change. Is there anything you would like to say to people who are considering getting a wolf dog puppy? Yes, <laughs> there's a lot of things, but I'll kind of try to keep it to the point. So first of all, just like always, people have to do their research and make sure that they know what they're getting themselves into. Really ask yourself truly what level of wolf content is appropriate for your level of experience, your lifestyle, that kind of thing. Don't automatically just go straight towards a high content wolf dog. Really ask yourself if you're going to get into wolf dog ownership, what content of wolf dog is right for you. On the assumption that you have checked off all the boxes of having proper containment, the right lifestyle, you know, kind of all those things in place, then it's a matter of figuring out a reputable place to get a potential wolf dog puppy. And there's a long list of things to look for. Um, there's actually a great article on the Wolf Dog Awareness website that I encourage people to look at. But you really want to do your due diligence and not just fall into the trap of getting whatever adorable puppy kind of comes across your email inbox or your Facebook page, that kind of thing. This is an animal that you're going to have for its entire life. This is an animal that is going to be very challenging and you're going to go through a lot with. And so you want to set yourself as well as your puppy up for success as best that you can. And so there's a lot of due diligence that needs to be done to find the right animal, the right temperament, and also make sure that you're supporting a breeder that does breed wolf dogs responsibly. Puppies are adorable, but they're only puppies for a very short amount of time. And raising a wolf dog puppy is not like raising a dog puppy. It is a lot more challenging for sure. And there's a lot less room for error when we're raising wolf dog puppies. Just a reminder that a wolf dog is a lifelong commitment and yes puppies are adorable and it's very easy to kind of fall into that frame of mind of oh my god I want a wolf dog puppy that this is potentially you know 12 to 16 years of your life and it's a decision that really needs to be made with a lot of consideration and just having really appropriate expectations for the whole experience as well and so yeah just a reminder for people to really ask themselves the hard questions about whether this is truly the right thing for you and the right thing for the animal. In this section we're going to talk about wolf dog breeders and what to look for if you're purchasing a wolf dog puppy. Now before moving forward we're going to assume that you have done the appropriate research required when it comes to wolf dog ownership and wolf behaviors and you have determined that you have the proper lifestyle available to support a wolf dog. If you haven't done your research I would recommend watching our previous YouTube videos to get an understanding about wolf dog ownership. The Yamnesco Wolf Dog Sanctuary recognizes that wolf dog ownership is gaining popularity in North America, which is why we provide you with information to help you make an informed choice and to ensure that all wolf dogs have a quality of life. If you have made an informed choice and have decided to purchase a wolf dog puppy, or you would just like to learn more about wolf dogs, it is important to be aware of wolf dog misrepresentation and breeders. Wolf dog misrepresentation happens when a person, a seller, the public, or an animal shelter is either misinformed or is misinforming others about the amount of wolf content present in a wolf dog or dog. This issue leads to extreme consequences that ultimately affects the animals in question. Wolf dog misrepresentation occurs when the public is largely unfamiliar with the traits of a wolf. For example, Dogs with little to no wolf content may be mislabeled as a wolf dog by their owner, the public, or animal shelter. These dogs are more likely to be labeled as a dangerous animal, and shelters typically euthanize a dog that is suspected to contain wolf content. On top of that, misconceptions are created about wolf dogs when someone claims that their purebred husky, for example, contains a large amount of wolf content. Someone may be motivated to adopt a real wolf dog when they are unprepared, because their friend's so-called wolf dog acts just like a husky. In areas where wolf dogs are illegal, 
Dogs with no wolf content have been confiscated and euthanized after being mislabeled for having wolf content. On the other end of the spectrum, a high content wolf dog may be mislabeled as a low content wolf dog in order to work around legalities. In places where high content wolf dogs are illegal, a person or breeder may claim their animal is a low content wolf dog or dog in order to sell them, which means an owner ends up with a high content wolf dog when they are not prepared to take on the responsibility that comes with one. Ultimately, misrepresentation, whether done intentionally or unintentionally, is harmful to the animals in question. High content wolf dog puppies typically sell for a higher price, and therefore breeders are sometimes motivated to be untruthful about the amount of wolf content in their puppies. For example, a breeder could say that their litter of blue-eyed husky puppies are 70% wolf, when in reality, these puppies have little to no wolf content in them. Unfortunately, misrepresentation happens when people are largely unfamiliar with the traits of a wolf and irresponsible breeders will prey on this ignorance when given the chance. These are some of the red flags you can look for when you are looking to purchase a wolf dog puppy. First and foremost, you want to ensure the breeder's animals are well taken care of, healthy, and respected. Once you have determined this, it is important to ensure they are being honest with you. When a breeder claims they are selling wolf dog puppies, watch out for some of these red flags. The breeder claims the wolf dog is mixed with an obscure wolf species or one that does not exist. It is illegal to breed or own a wolf dog that contains Mexican gray wolf or red wolf content because these animals are highly endangered. If a breeder claims their wolf dogs have red wolf content, they are probably being dishonest. A breeder may also claim that their puppies contain wolf content from an obscure wolf species. The breeder fabricates pedigree papers to prove the wolf heritage. Wolf dogs are mutts, which means they are mixed with several different breeds. Therefore, they do not come with official pedigree papers. It is also worth noting which registry is featured on the papers, because there are kennel clubs that are considered less reputable and will offer registration for mixed breed and hybrid dogs. For example, in this image, this wolf dog is claimed to have 84% wolf content, when in reality it is very obvious to the trained eye that this animal has a lot more dog content than claimed. The wolf dog's parents cannot be met in person. A responsible breeder prevents accidental breeding and ensures all the offspring are bred for the betterment of the puppies. For example, they prioritize breeding healthy and friendly wolf dogs to ensure their puppies exhibit similar behaviors. It is also very important to meet the parents of the dogs to ensure they are well taken care of and healthy. The breeder does not inquire whether the buyer has previous experience, proper containment, or the appropriate lifestyle required for a wolf dog. If a wolf dog does not work out in their new home, a responsible breeder will offer to take the wolf dog back in order to rehome the animal. Responsible breeders prioritize the well-being of the wolf dog to ensure they are going to the right home by asking questions and confirming that the buyer is prepared for the challenges of wolf dog ownership. Misrepresentation is especially common when a breeder claims that their puppies are specifically high content wolf dogs because their puppies sell for a higher price. Watch out for these signs to determine whether or not a breeder is being truthful about the content of their wolf dog puppies. The puppy is born with defined markings or white fur. Like wolves, high content wolf dog puppies are born with dark fur and have no distinguishable markings. Even arctic wolf puppies are born with dark fur before they mature into a white coat. If a breeder is claiming that their puppies are high content wolf dogs, but the puppies have defined markings, a breeder is likely being dishonest. The puppy's claws, lips, paw pads, and nose are not black. If the wolf dog is mixed with gray wolf, they should have a black nose, black lips, black nails, and black paw pads. Arctic wolves sometimes do have clear nails, but their paw pads, noses, and lips are black. Dogs and lower content wolf dogs, however, can have brown noses, pink lips, and multicolored claws. If a puppy has different colors present in these features, it is indicative of a significant amount of dog content. The puppies have ice blue, dark brown, or mixed colored eyes. High content wolf dog puppy eyes are gray-blue in color, which changes into a yellow or amber color when they mature. 
Dogs, however, can display very bright blue eyes that remain blue the remainder of their life. Brown eyes and multicolor eyes are very uncommon in high content wolf dog puppies as well, which means there is likely a significant amount of dog content present in the animal. Irresponsible breeders rely on people being unfamiliar with wolf traits, and they will prey on that ignorance when given the chance. Sometimes, the breeders themselves are simply uneducated when it comes to wolf traits, and they are unintentionally misrepresenting their wolf dogs. Either way, by being aware of these red flags, it ensures potential buyers are well educated and prepared before purchasing a wolf dog puppy. It is also very important to never be dishonest about the amount of wolf content present in your wolf dog or dog. These issues ultimately affect the animals in question, and they are the ones that suffer the consequences. Misrepresentation has unfortunately gotten a countless number of wolf dogs and dogs killed, which is why it is important to be educated, honest, and aware about wolf content. Well, thank you for watching the video. We do really appreciate it. Your support means a lot to us. Um, if you would like to learn more about wolf dogs, feel free to check out Georgina's blog, Wolf Dog Awareness, where you can learn all about wolf dog ownership. On top of that as well, if you would like to send a little bit of love to this uh, handsome fella, you are welcome to sponsor Nova. You can do so on our website and send him a little bit of extra love. Looks like Zeus is going to come and say goodbye for our video as well. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.